David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, Think Like a Billionaire. Everything you need to know about success, real estate, and life by Donald J. Trump with Meredith McKeever. Trump dedicates this book to his parents, Fred and Mary Trump. This book is divided into five parts. Real estate, money, business of life, slices of the billionaire's life, Inside the Apprentice. Since this book was published in 2004, Melania Trump was then Melania Noss. As you can see, she dressed a little more provocatively then. He was also the star of The Apprentice, as you can see here. He finished season one and was going into season two. That's what the last part of this book is about. Also at this time, Trump had a lot of celebrity friends. Tony Bennett, Jay Leno, Jeff Zucker, Garth Brooks, A-Rod, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jeff Gordon, Katie Couric. As for the contents of the book, I believe that you, the viewer, will get more out of the introduction and part three other than me going into all the other sections. And uh, the part about The Apprentice, I don't really know much about that. I never watched the show. I've heard of it. And I know the, you're fired. I know that. <laughs> I don't know the show. I've never seen an episode of the show. So if you're interested, you can go into all that stuff yourself. So now let's get into the introduction. 10 ways of thinking like a billionaire. One, don't take vacations. Trump says, what's the point? If you don't enjoy your job, then you should find another job. Abe Wallach, the Trump Organization's former executive vice president of acquisitions and finance, told the Boston Globe, it would bore him and perhaps scare him. He needs constant activity and gratification. Employees of Trump said that he would call them while they were on vacation with work-related questions, sometimes twice a day or more. Two, have a short attention span. Trump says that the most successful people have a very short attention span. You know, I kind of agree with this because, um, you know, people need to get to the point. But you need to be focused at the same time. So if you have a short attention span, how are you going to be focused? How are you going to read a book that takes maybe five hours? I don't know. I think he's definitely got attention deficit disorder said Trump biographer Michael D. Antonio, who interviewed Trump five times for a total of eight hours and found himself frustrated trying to get him to concentrate on answers to questions about his parents, his childhood, just about anything. That doesn't mean he isn't really smart. It just means he's not at his best when asked to dwell on a topic. Three, don't sleep any more than you have to. Trump says that he sleeps four hours a night. I would say he sleeps four to five hours a night, Trump's physician, Navy doctor Ronnie Jackson, told reporters. He's probably been like that his whole life. He's just one of those people who does not require a lot of sleep. There's a scientific name for these people, short sleepers. Four, don't depend on technology. Trump says he doesn't have a computer in his office. He believes that email is for wimps. Now, this book was published in 2004, so I'm assuming he changed his views on that because he's tweeting constantly. See, look at this. Five, think of yourself as a one-man army. See, here are a couple references to Trump being a one-man army. Yuri Gripas of Reuters writes, President Donald Trump is a one-man army in the full-blown trade war with China. Trump is trusting his instincts. See, this is classic Trump. He trusts his gut, his instincts. And, by the way, he won that trade war. Six, it's to your advantage to be underestimated. Ultra-successful people live great lives in a low-key manner. It's okay to tell people about your accomplishments, but it's even better when they find out for themselves. Also, it was estimated that Hillary Clinton had an 85% chance of beating Trump in a 2016 election. He was definitely underestimated. Seven, success breeds success. The best way to impress people is through results. As you can see, Trump gets results. 
That's what he's all about. Eight, friends are good, but family is better. Well, as you can see here, Trump has a very large family. Nine, vast fortunes are accumulated through dozens of decisions a day, thousands a month, and hundreds of thousands in a career. He says, treat each decision like a lover, faithfully, respectfully, and appropriately. Ten, be curious. This reminds me of when I was a little kid. I used to wander the woods behind my house, and I would go and stay there for hours just exploring. And then I eventually uh, rode my bike throughout the city and beyond, exploring again, just getting lost. I did the same thing in Brazil. I used to walk the streets and get lost. And uh, I think I'm doing the same thing with books, just getting lost in them, just letting my mind wander. He says there are seven time-tested rules for anyone working in business, and these are very basic. One, be on time. Two, do your homework, plan ahead. Three, make a mental dossier on people. Find out some things about them. Four, remember people's names and little details. Maybe the person is a golfer or loves tennis. You know, bring that up in a conversation. Five, be honest. You know, be honest. I <laughs> mean, come on. Six, let other people talk. You know, when you ask somebody something, let them answer. Listen more than you speak. Seven, be disarming. Don't be a bulldozer in business. In conclusion, I think the billionaire book is good, but this one is by far his best art of the deal here. I prefer this one. I think he had minimal input in the billionaire book, maybe in the introduction and maybe the apprentice part, but I think his writer took care of everything else. It's just my opinion, but still a good book. I highly recommend it, and I will talk to you later. Bye.